In this video we will introduce the software and we will cover what chunks are, how to import photographs and how to mask photographs ready for mesh creation. Agisoft is a fairly large software with many options and methods. In this brief overview of the software we will introduce some of the menus that you need to get through the process of creating a 3D model for your photographs. To start we must introduce the interface a little. The main display is separated into four parts. At the top of the screen there are the usual file menus that you will find in most software. The most important menus for what we will be doing here are the file menu where we will export the models and images and the workflow menu. The central area is where the model will be displayed along with the point clouds and other information pertaining to the model. Below that is an area where the photographs that you have loaded as well as the console where you will find information which updates as you work. This is a good place to find more information about what has been done to the model as well as statistics. Finally, to the left there is a large workspace and reference tab. The workspace tab shows you a list of the models and images that you have created so far. This is also where you will create chunks which will be explained shortly. At the bottom of the window there is a tab called reference. Clicking this takes you to a new window with three windows. This is where you will georeference your photographs and update them and all the coordinate systems. This will be covered in more depth in a later video. To speed up your processing, one thing you can do is set Agis off to use your GPU to process. To do this, go to Tools, Preferences, and then in the GPU tab, make sure that your GPUs are turned on. If you have CPU based graphics like Iris on an Intel, you should leave this unticked. You can also turn on Use CPU when performing GPU accelerated process if you have a discrete graphics card. Agisoft uses a system of chunk to separate models. Think of chunks as workspaces. You can have multiple models loaded at the same time in different chunks, which will be independent of each other. Under certain circumstances, they can be merged together to create singular models, but it is more useful to use them as independent workspaces and batch process multiple sets of data independently. An example would be if you had 10 stones you wanted to run exactly the same process on automatically. You would load each set of stones into its own chunk and then set up a batch process instruction. Agisoft would then run through each task for each chunk until the batch was processed. In this class we will only use one chunk. Importing photos can be done in a number of ways. The easiest way is to drag and drop the photos you want into the centre of the model display. This will add them to the current chunk. If you want to add them to a different chunk that is not active, you would drag them into the chunk name on the list in the left. It will likely be necessary to mask your photos if there are lots of areas that have, for example, grass on them. If you mask out the grass, the software will not try to reconstruct it, meaning that the whole process will be quicker and you will not have to spend time cleaning up the model afterwards. Unfortunately, clipping is largely a manual job. Although there is supposed to be some element of automatic masking, I have never managed to get it to work properly. In most instances, it is better to just do it manually. To mask a photo, you will double click on the photograph in the bottom corner, zoom out so you have the entire photograph on the screen, and then press L or go to Intelligent Scissors in the photograph menu. With this intelligent scissors tool, you'll be able to draw a mask on the screen. Once this is done, press Ctrl, Shift and A. You will see that part of the photograph becomes dark. If you have a programmable keyboard, I strongly recommend you set it up for this. This part of the photo is now the masked part and will not be considered in the processing. As you can see, the removal of the trees, grass, etc. will greatly decrease the processing time. It's possible to have more than one area of masking on each photo, and it's also possible to invert masks. To invert a mask, right click on the photo at the bottom and go to Masks, Invert Masks, Invert Selected Masks. You can also reset masks from the same menu. If you want to see which photos you have masked, you click the Mask button on the bottom toolbar. In this video, we have examined Agisoft's layout, chunks, how to import photographs and how to mask photographs. 